If you own a Tesla, then you know that your phone replaces physical keys to the car. But your phone can be much more than that. I'm Frugal Tesla Guy, and I'm going to take you into every nook and cranny of the Tesla app. In August of 2021, Tesla revamped their app with a new look and more features with version 4.0 and I gave you my first impressions on the day it was released. And I mentioned there was room for the app to improve and grow over time. Well, here we are a little less than six months later and Tesla app version 4.5.1, and indeed there have been improvements and growth. And there is no doubt it will continue to improve over time. In fact, in the time I've been preparing and recording this video, there have actually been two updates forcing me to re-record some of the segments, including this introduction. But that's what Tesla does. They continue to look for ways to help improve your Tesla experience via software updates for the car and, of course, the Tesla app. Now, since this will be another very long video, I will be posting a timeline in the description below for your convenience. So let's get right to it and give you a detailed look at the Tesla app and how to navigate through the many features it has to offer. Now the first thing you'll need to do is download the Tesla app from your phone's app store. And upon opening it up for the first time, you will need to log into your Tesla account. Now it will be the same username and password that you use to set up your account on the Tesla website. If you set up your account with a two-factor authentication, then you will also need to enter your temporary code from a separate app. Now once you're signed into your account, you will be able to pair your phone with the car as a phone key. You start by going into the car and tap the car icon, locks, and then tap the plus symbol. Now go to your phone, open the app, and of course you need to make sure you're logged in, and tap Set Up Phone Key. Then press Pair. Swipe your key card on the center console. Now this will be one of the cards either Tesla set up for you when you picked up your car or one that you programmed yourself. Once you do that, you'll get a notification on your phone that the pairing process was a success. Your phone is now a key for your car. Now upon opening the app, there will be an image of your car matching its configuration. In the upper left corner of the screen, you will see the name of your car, the status of the battery, and the status of your car. In the upper right is a circle with an image that you can personalize with your own photo and will take you to your own personal account page, which we'll go over a little bit more detail later. Below the car are four of your favorite quick functions for the car. Scroll down and you will see all of the menu items from controls to setting up an appointment with your local service center. We start in the upper left portion of the screen with the name of your car. Now you can change that at any time from your car by tapping the car icon, software, then tap the name of your car. Now, once you type in the new name, it will appear in the app. Below the name of your car is the status of your battery. Now, when you tap the battery, a charging window will pop up on the screen, allowing you to change the charge limit. To do that, press and hold the white dot and scroll either left or right to the charging limit you want. To make it easier for you, Tesla has added lines on the green bar from 50% to 90%. And to make it even easier, you'll feel a haptic each time you reach one of those lines. Now when you're scrolling, you will also be able to see how much estimated range in miles or kilometers the battery will have at that particular charge limit. Now below the charge limit is the amp setting you have for charging. Tap the arrows on either side to increase or decrease charging amps. 
Now, depending on what kind of charger you're using, once it's plugged in, the car and app will know the max number of amps that particular charger is capable of. One quick note, tapping the battery will not open the charge port. Much like that on the screen in your car, tapping the number to the right of the battery will take you back and forth between the current percent of charge and the number of estimated miles left in the battery. Below the battery is the status of your car, which will typically be in park when you're in the app. However, if someone is driving the car, it will show you that the car is in reverse or drive and even show you the speedometer. The image of the car sits front and center on the home screen. However, it's not there just to look pretty, but actually serves a purpose. Number one, if you have more than one Tesla, it will let you know which car you're viewing at a quick glance. Number two, it will also show you if the front, trunk, or any doors are open. It will also display if the heater or AC is running. If you're charging, it will give you a different viewing angle of the car to show a charging cable in the charge port. The charging cable will show you when the car is charging with an animating green line going into the car. In the upper right is a circle with a profile image. Tapping it will bring you to your personal page. At the very top, is a profile image which you can personalize by tapping it and you will be taken to the photos app on your phone. Choose the one you want and you now have a personalized image. Below your name or the name on the account are images of your Teslas and you will be able to select which one the app will control. Now this is also where the Tesla shop is where you can purchase a gift card or anything else in the online store. If you have Tesla Solar this is also where it will be. You will be able to swipe left and right between these items. Below that is your inbox. Now this is where you will find information coming directly from Tesla along with the date the information was sent. Below inbox is Loopbox. Now every Tesla owner has a referral code and for every person that uses your code to purchase a Tesla or Solar, Tesla will give you rewards based on the current referral code program. Now the loot box will show you your current rewards. <laughs> By the way, thank all of you that have used my referral code in the past because as you can see, I have over 460,000 miles of free supercharging that will be available to me to use until May 13th of 2023. Now we all know I won't be able to use all those. I only wish I could transfer to some of those to, to some of you. At the bottom, you will be able to share your referral link with any of the contacts on your phone and you will also get a list of everyone that has used your referral code and even when the car was delivered. Again, many thanks to all of you on this list. To get out of the loot box, tap the arrow in the upper left. By tapping account, it will take you to a page with four or five different menu items depending on whether or not you have insurance through Tesla. Contact info will show you the content information Tesla has on file for you. If any of this information changes, you can tap edit to the right of the information you need to change. And once you change the information, tap update at the bottom of your screen. Tap the arrow in the upper left part of the screen to go back to the account menu. Wallet will show you the different credit cards you have on file with Tesla. The one on top with the word default and a green check is obviously the default form of payment for any balance on your account. Below that are other cards. You can remove or make any of them your default payment by tapping the card. You can also add a credit card or a bank account by tapping add in the upper right. Tap the arrow in the upper left to go back. Order history will show you everything you have purchased from the Tesla store. You can tap on any of the items to get more details on what you paid and where it was sent. Charging will give you two different options. The first is manage payment, allowing you to edit your billing address and your payment method. History will show you all of your supercharging stops along with how much you paid. It will show you the past six months, but you can actually download more supercharging data based on the year and month from as far back as when you purchased the car. 
Now, if you have insurance through Tesla, this is where you can go not only to get all of your policy information along with your proof of insurance and policy documents, but you can also view past claims and even start a new claim right from the app. In documents, you can now add a copy of your proof of insurance in Apple Wallet. Keep tapping on the arrows in the upper left until you go back to your personal page. Settings allows you to turn on and off calendar sync to your car. Next is notifications. Now this will take you to a page to control which notifications the app will send to your phone. Start by selecting which car or cars you want notifications for. You can get a notification if the car alarm is triggered, if charging started, was interrupted or complete if there's a new software update, if cabin overheat protection has started, and when precondition is complete. The check mark to the right of each notification indicates that particular notification is on, and a blank circle means it is not turned on. Tap the arrow in the upper left to go back to settings and again to get to your personal page. Below settings is help and it takes you to a page with some useful information. So be sure to check it out so you know what's there for future reference. Below help is where you go to sign out of the app. At the very bottom is the app version you're running, who you're logged in as, and you can also view Tesla's customer privacy policy, which will take you out of the app and to their website. Tap the arrow on the upper left to go back to the home screen. Below the car are four easy access quick controls for the car which are customizable. To choose which ones you want, simply press and hold any one of the icons and other options will appear. Drag and drop any one of the other icons over an existing one to replace it. You can also change the order of the icons with a simple drag and drop. As of right now, you can only have four but that's actually an improvement from the three when the new version of the app was released. Be sure to press save after making any changes. When you're in the car, you will notice that the media player shows up at the top of the list. Now this will give you your basic control of the media player, including volume control, pause and play, forward and back a track, and advancing to the next station. Otherwise, at the top of the list is controls. Now this will take you to a screen with a top view of the car. From here, you can open the frunk and the trunk, and for safety and security reasons, it will confirm with you whether or not you want to open them. This is to help prevent you from accidentally opening the frunk or trunk remotely. Tapping the padlock icon will lock and unlock the car. Tapping the lightning icon will open the charge port. If the car is charging, you will see the cable plugged in with the animating green line. Now below the car is a line of four icons. Tapping the flash icon will flash the lights and you can honk the horn. You can remotely start the car if you need to give someone access. Now once you tap it, they will have two minutes to get in and put the car in drive. If you have home link, you can press the icon to open and close the garage door. That is of course, if your car is within range of the garage door. Next on the list is climate. Just below it in smaller letters is the interior temperature of the car. When climate control is on, it will display the word active. If any of the windows are open, it will also display this information. Tap climate and it will bring you to a top view of the car looking through the glass top. 
You can start by turning on the seat heaters and like that of version 11 software, it will also turn on climate control. If you just want the seat heater on, you can turn off climate control by tapping the off button in the lower left. Below the car is the interior temperature of the car, along with the exterior temperature. If you have precondition on, it will show you what time it's starting. Just above that, you can tap the time to make adjustments from there, which we'll get into a little bit later. Below that in big numbers is the temperature the cabin was last set to. If it's off, it will be grayed out, like that on the touchscreen in the car. To turn on climate control, you can tap the on icon to the left as mentioned earlier or either one of the left or right arrows which will also adjust the temperature setting. When you tap on an arrow, a slider will appear above it, allowing you to quickly slide to the temperature you want. When climate control is on, the temperature will be highlighted in white along with the on and off button. To the far right is the vent button. Now this will vent all of the windows and will be highlighted in white with the word close. Tap it to close all of the windows. On a side note, if you left one or all of your windows open, this will also close the windows. Slide up for more options and to avoid tapping any controls, it's best to use the slider bar at the top. This will give you more climate control options, such as defrosting the car and controlling the cabin overheat protection feature. Below climate is location. Just below it in smaller font is the actual location of the car. Tap location and it will bring you to a map showing your location with a blue dot in comparison to the location of your car which is the red arrow. At the very top is the address the car is located and to the right are three different options. The curved arrow will give you directions to the car from your location. This will take you to the native app in iPhone and I can only assume it takes you to Google Maps on Android devices but I can't say for sure. Now below that is the navigation arrow. Like that in your car, if it's grayed out, that means the location of your car is not centered on the screen. Tap it to bring it back to the center. Now this is great if you're moving the map around and you lose your location. The globe will take you back and forth between satellite view and regular maps. Below that are nearby superchargers. Now zoom out on the map if you want to see the location of those chargers. And tapping on any one of those chargers will give you the address of that charger along with the number of stalls available. You can also send directions to that supercharger to the car. Tap anywhere on the map to get out of that particular window. If someone is driving the car, it will follow them in close to real time. Tap the arrow in the upper left to get back to the home screen. If you have enhanced autopilot or full self-driving, then you will have Summon listed below location. Now this is a topic that deserves a video of its own, so be sure to look for that soon. In the meantime, to get you started, I do have a detailed how-to summon video from a previous app version, which will be in the description below, until I get to this app version. Next on the list is schedule. If you have any kind of charging or preconditioning schedule set for the car, you will see that in smaller letters below it. There are two different categories to choose from, departure and charge. Departure will preheat your battery for optimal performance and efficiency, especially in colder climates, and will also preheat the cabin to a set temperature. To do this, you first need to set the time you plan on leaving. Then toggle on precondition, which will give you two more options. Set the schedule for every day of the week or just weekdays. Next, you will also have the option to set the charging to off-peak charging rates, which also has the all-week and weekday options, along with when the off-peak energy rates end in your area. Now, this will only apply to those with lowered electric utility rates at certain times of the day. 
You can also schedule when you want the car to charge based on those lower energy rates. For example, if you get home from work at 6 p.m., but the lower energy rates don't go into effect until 11 p.m., then you can set charging at 11 p.m. Now this is a great feature that allows you to keep the habit of plugging in when you get home with the peace of mind, knowing it will only charge during those off-peak times. You can toggle on and off scheduled charging along with precondition and off-peak charge. Next is security. Just below security will let you know whether or not your phone is connected to the car and if sentry mode is on as indicated by the red dot. An image of the Tesla keycard is at the top of the page with the status of your phone's connection to the car. Tap on it and it will give you more details. Tap having trouble and it will also give you advice as to why the phone will not connect and if you just want to disconnect your phone altogether. Below the key card are other security features, starting with sentry mode where you can toggle it on and off. If you want to view the live cameras on your car, sentry mode will need to be on. Once it's on, you can tap view live camera and it will load up the front camera. Now one thing to take note is the headlights and taillights will flash once it loads the camera image and will flash every 30 seconds after that as long as you're still viewing the cameras. You can also view the two side repeater cameras and the rear camera. Valet mode allows you to limit access to things like the glove box and also limit the top speed of the car. When you toggle it on for the first time, you will be asked to create a four digit pin. Now this will be the pin you'll need to type in to turn it off if you're in the car. And once you have a pin set, you will also be able to toggle it on and off without creating a new one. However, you also have the option to clear your pin from the app. If you have a teenager, you can make sure they aren't driving too fast by turning on speed limit mode. Now like valet mode, you will set it up with a four digit pin. You can also clear the pin by tapping clear pin below it. But since your teenager's phone will most likely be used as a key, along with having access to the app, you will need to type in the four digit pin in order to clear it. To adjust the top speed, tap the three dots next to the toggle switch and you can set it anywhere between 50 and 90 miles per hour. Tap anywhere outside of the adjust speed limit window to get rid of it. You can add a driver to your car without the need for a key card or key fob. To do this, tap add driver and it will take you to another screen. It will pull up your contacts list and will share a link for them to accept. Now that person will be able to use a previous Tesla account or download the app and create a new Tesla account. They will have 24 hours to accept the invitation. To remove the driver, tap manage drivers and next to the driver's name, tap remove and tap yes to confirm. In an effort to get you even more excited about driving an electric car, Tesla has added charge stats to the app. And in a nutshell, it shows you your gas savings. Now you will be able to see how many kilowatt hours you have added to your car in the last 31 days, and to the right of that, how much you have spent in energy costs. Now the graph below that is a day-by-day -day breakdown of your charging over the last 31 days. The y-axis represents kilowatt hours added, and the x-axis represents days. You can get more detailed information by pressing and holding anywhere on the graph and dragging left and right. Now, each day will display the date, which type of charging you used, your total charge for that particular day, and how much you spent. The blue lines represent home charging, the red lines supercharging, and gray other locations, which obviously would include anything other than home or supercharging. Below the graph is a breakdown of the type of charging you have used in the last 31 days. Below that is your estimated gas savings, and by pressing the information icon, you will be able to see how Tesla makes that estimation. 
Average cost will show you how much you are paying per kilowatt hour at home, supercharging, and any other types of charging situations you might be using. Tapping the information icon in that section will show you how Tesla is getting that information. Supercharging is calculated based on your billing data over the last 31 days, but home and other can be personalized by tapping customize. Now this will take you to a new menu called settings, which can also be accessed at the bottom of the charge stats page. From here, you will be able to customize your utility rates and what you are paying per kilowatt hour at any other charging stations outside of home and supercharging. Tap home and you will see the name of your utility company along with your rate plan you're on, the breakdown of seasons and the buy and sell price per kilowatt hour. Now, since I don't have solar, I can only assume the sell price is what your utility company pays for any excess energy that you add to the grid. By the way, the reason all of this information is here is when I opened this menu item for the first time, Tesla gave me the option to go through a step-by-step -step process to add all of this information. I recommend you do this so you can get the most accurate numbers for your particular situation. You will also be able to edit this information whenever you need to. Now, since I don't have a tiered utility rate, I don't use seasons. However, I did want to point out that when I was playing around with it, you will be able to add up to three seasons. Now, you can customize the months by tapping and holding and dragging the marker to the month you need. After you do that, tap next and add the utility rate for each season. Once you are done, be sure to tap save. You can also customize what you are paying per kilowatt hour at other charging stations as well, or just keep the average Tesla has calculated based on your state. Now keep tapping the arrow in the upper left to get to the home page. Upgrade will show you any upgrades your car is eligible for. Now it all depends on the configuration of your car. To see if there are any upgrades available, tap Software Upgrades and it will show you along with a price allowing you to purchase it right from the app. Tesla will then upload the upgrade to your car via a software update. To the right of Buy is Subscribe to see if you're eligible for any subscriptions. To see which software upgrades and subscriptions you have, tap Manage. You can also find Manage at the bottom of the main upgrades home screen. And once you're in Manage, you will see all of your active upgrades and subscriptions. To view receipts and manage any subscriptions, tap that particular subscription and it will show you the price. When it renews, the billing address, which you can edit if you need to, your payment information, which you can also edit, and the monthly receipts, which are in PDF files. You will also have the option to cancel the subscription by tapping Cancel Subscription. To go back to the Manage page, tap the arrow in the upper left. Tap Inactive to see any of your inactive upgrades or subscriptions. Go back to Active and you will see permissions at the bottom of the screen. You can toggle on and off in-car upgrades which will turn on or off the ability to make upgrade purchases from your car. When it's toggled off, you will not be able to make upgrade purchases in your car. Toggle it on in the app to allow for upgrade purchases. Tesla has also conveniently added a link to the accessory section of their store where you can purchase things like floor mats and wheels. Tap the arrow on the upper left and you will eventually get back to the home page. If you have FSD and you are waiting to be approved for the FSD beta program, then you will have a menu item below upgrades called Safety Score Beta. Now in here, you will be able to monitor your score. Now this is also a topic that deserves its own video, which I have done. I will post a link to it in the description below. If you have any issues with your car and need to take it to a service center, tap Service and then press Schedule Service. It will give you a list of different types of services you may need. Tap the one you need and follow the instructions. It will ask you to upload pictures and describe your issues. 
Once you confirm everything, you will be sent an email and text and updated on the scheduled date and time as it gets closer. You may also get a call from a technician if they have any questions. On the main service page, tap History to see all of your past service center requests and visits. You will see which service center you use, and you will also have access to the invoice for that particular service, along with any communication you had with the service center via the app. Now, in an effort for any issues to be taken care of without the service center, Tesla has added video guides along with quick access to the owner's manual. If you find yourself stranded on the side of the road, open Roadside. Tap Select Car Condition, and much like that of service, follow the instructions on the screen. Depending on your issue, Tessa has added quick links that might help take care of that issue. If none of those help, tap Next and confirm your location. Now on the main Roadside page, you can also go straight to Roadside Assistance Support that will take you to the website to give you more information about the service. Widgets have been added to the Tesla app as well, and there are two different sizes to choose from. The first is the small one, which shows the name and picture of your car, the percent of battery or miles left depending on how you have it set in the car, and its location. The other one is bigger and has the same information as the small one with an added battery icon to show how much charge is left. It also has the four custom controls you have set in the app. This will allow you to perform any of these functions right from the home screen. That being said, it does immediately open the app once you do this. To add either one of these widgets to your home screen, tap any of the icons or a blank part of the screen to enter edit mode. Tap the plus icon in the upper left and type Tesla in the search widgets menu bar. Tap the Tesla icon, swipe left or right to choose which one you want, tap add widget, and it will be added to your home screen. Now there is another feature that can easily be overlooked and is worth mentioning in this video, and that is the ability to send directions to your Tesla from your phone. Simply type in the address you're looking for and use the share feature from whichever app you're using and tap the Tesla app. Now, if you're in the car, you will see the directions pop up almost immediately. And if you're not in the car, they will be there once you get in the car. Now, I've tried Google Maps, the native iPhone Maps app, and even MapQuest. Outside of that, I'm not sure which other apps will work, but I'm sure if it has the option to share, it will work. Now, one thing to note, make sure you only have the address you want to navigate to in the app. Otherwise, the share option will not be available if you're in the turn-by-turn -turn directions mode. Well, I hope you learned something new in this video. If so, do me a favor and click that like button. And if you haven't done so already, you might even want to consider becoming a subscriber. Now, keep in mind, as I make this video, Tesla is continuing to make changes and improvements to the app. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I am currently on version 4.5.1. Well, thank you all so much for watching and you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and stay positively charged.